evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for com coming to tonight's press conference. My name is Muhammad Wasim, and I will be your facilitator tonight. I was born and have lived in Rochdale all my life, and have been active in the local Muslim community for many years, organizing seminars and events. Tonight's event has been organized by local residents of the Muslim community in Rochdale and the surrounding areas. These include Muslim writers, bloggers, businessmen, activists, professionals, solicitors, and others including Muslim organizations. Before I continue, a small introduction to the event and some house rules. Tonight's event has been organized with the background of the rising Islamophobia and discrimination not only in the Rockwell Brothers, but also the surrounding areas and wider British society. I have a panel of guests today on the, for the event, and they are Mr. Qasim Duwaid, uh, who is a local businessman, Mr. Uh, Suleiman Ahmed, who is from the Rochdale Association of Private High Drivers, Mr. Mr. Kamran Khalid, who is also from the Association of Rochdale Association of Private High Drivers, Mr. Abdul Rashid at the end, who is also from the same organization, and Omar. On this side, we've got Mr. Um, Mr. Shokas Hussein, who was a victim of, a, of an attack in, whilst driving his taxi. The format for today's event will be as follows. In a few moments, I will ask Mr. Suleiman Ahmed to read out a short press statement, after which there will be time for questions from the floor. When asking your questions, please state your name clearly and what press organization you are from, and please keep the question short so we can have more time for people to ask questions. Um, so I will hand over to Mr. Suleiman Ahmed to read the press statement. attitudes to violence, the situation is both unprecedented and totally unacceptable. In the light of this, we would like to make the following points. Uh, first, first of all, it has become evident to, every, to anyone that follows events on the media that Islam is being portrayed negatively and that Muslims living in Britain are bearing the brunt of discrimination and violence. There is little doubt that this has resulted in not only the community feeling vilified, but could potentially, potentially break down social cohesion within society. And the second point I would like to make today is irresponsible comments from senior local and national politicians are aiding the negative portrayal of the Muslim community. Time and time again, some politicians and the media have attempted to equate issues such as grooming and the Muslim community as one and the same. It is only natural that this sort of misinformation will stigmatize the whole of the Muslim community. This is, this has meant that casual xenophobia towards Muslims has now become an acceptable norm. It should, and thirdly, it should be noticed that the prevalence of criminality in society, such as sexual grooming and drug abuse, is due to a wider societal problem. According to the NSPCC, Nearly a quarter, 24.1% of young adults, experienced sexual abuse, including contact and non-contact, by an adult or a peer during childhood. Nazir Afzal, Crown Prosecution Services lead to child sex abuse and violence against women and girls, explains that we have come across cases all over the country and the ethnicity of the perpetrators varies depending 
on where you are. It is not the abuser's race that defines them. It is their attitude to women that defines them. Moreover, the recent Anne Coffey report found that systematic grooming of boys and girls has become a social norm in some parts of Manchester, <coughs> fueled by explicit music videos and quasi-pornographic selfies. And lastly, the fourth point I'd like to make is the excessive focus <coughs> on the ethnicity and religion of non-white sexual abuse perpetrators has led to the stigmatization of the Muslim community. Whereas the ethnicity and religious affiliation of the individuals, such as Jimmy Savile, Cyril Smith, the former MP of Rochdale, Stuart Hall, Max Clifford, etc., none of whom were Muslims or Asians and have been ignored by the wider media, even though they have used their position of responsibility and power to carry out abuse against vulnerable women, girls and boys, lasting decades. This inconsistency is indicative of the bigoted political and media profiling that has resulted in the stigmatization of the Muslim community. That's all. facing a situation where a dis disdain of the Muslim community is something which is deemed acceptable. We do not wish to go back to the situation where discrimination against minorities becomes the norm. We believe that all segments of society have a duty to stand up against Islamophobia in all its guises. No matter how subtle or apparent, uh, we intend to double our efforts in order to alleviate the mis misconceptions that have been manufactured by ir irresponsible speech, not only by the, by the far right, but the mainstream <coughs> politicians and the media. Part of our action plan will be to educate the wider society about Islamic beliefs and to help overcome stereotypes against Islam. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I'll open the floor for any questions. If you want to ask a question, please state the name of the organization you represent. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, uh, there is people uh, police harassing the drivers without any evidence um, and also the drivers got suspended without any proof and after uh, the one year of the, the people not working um, and then the sending of the letter council to the drivers you can back to the work and also police being I heard about here mostly the drivers in around about 50 or 60 drivers still going under, under an investigation about the child sex abuse, but the, not all the rivals are the, uh, the rapists. There is black sheep in our society as well, as well as the white community as well. But we have to uh, work with the local communities and authorities as well to these allegations coming, mostly the taxi drivers, uh, is my brothers uh, working very hard for the families as well. So I'm, I'm asking local authorities to cooperate with drivers and those with the taxis rights to work t together and those people who are responsible for these issues to work with, together with the communities as well. So I'm hoping 
in futures, any events, medias or police, they should talk to their local people as well, as well as drivers as well. I got a couple of examples here sitting with me. They've been suspended from the job and they haven't worked for a long period. And some people are getting divorced as well. And after that, one year, they are innocent. And uh, the people are coming here uh, through the media because they're feeling shy or shame for their families. And they are very, 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 very feeling bad at the moment. So I'm asking my brothers and also the media as well to cooperate with these issues. And we work with the local authorities as well. Thank you very much. I think uh, one point I'd like to make according to this, uh, obviously the situation is very uh, intense at this moment in time, but I think the idea that we need to get everything out in the open, and that way is that the only way we can do this is if we hold uh, like a forum of all the people in Rochdale uh, that have a, responsible, have a responsibility for law and order, that it would include the police, uh, the local MP, and also our local councils. Now they need to, obviously, uh, we, need, we need to open up the whole sort of situation that this is our problem that society is facing, our community is facing, uh, and that's, that's the only way we can get it. We have to talk about it. If we don't talk about it, if we feel ashamed of, oh yeah, this and that, and our community does not support our people, they, 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 they have deemed them guilty before a trial. And it's saying that, you know, oh, yeah, they must have done something. But that's not the way forward. We need to, obviously, um, discuss this in front of everybody and ask the police and ask the local MPs and the councillors to come to the bottom of this, and while this investigation is going on, I think that to take their uh, livelihood away from them is wrong. And also, the other thing I'd like to make is whatever happened to you know guilty, you know sort of uh, innocent until proven guilty, and it shouldn't be that guilty unless proven otherwise. That's all. The if I can just add to that, I think what you've just said is a. Uh is, a, is a, the exact problem that we've got is that people, Muslims, now taxi drivers, or even generally as Muslims, the, the hysteria that's been created by the media the and the politicians means that people are now guilty by association. So therefore, if you drive a taxi and you're in from Rochdale, you're almost you're almost a <coughs> suspect before you've even driven your taxi. And this is the problem, this is the whole point of this press conference, is to show that the Muslim community we're not going to stand for this anymore because we are not all criminals by association of being Muslim. And you are not all criminals by association of being taxi drivers. And I think the point is that everybody, the media, the politicians, they need to make statements which are not um, a, you know, inflammatory towards taxi drivers or the Muslim community. But what you see is that continuously the statements that come out from the media and from the politicians is to link Muslim, Islam, Pakistani taxi drivers as a sexual groomer. And they ignore, and this is one of the points in the press release, is that they ignore issues such as when Cyril Smith and uh, uh, Jimmy Savile conducted their crimes, which are crimes, Islam condemns all of these, whether it be Muslim or non-Muslim. When they conduct their crimes, none of the media ever said uh, or suspect that everyone working for the BBC in the 60s and 70s that were white of a certain age was, were grooming children. The media don't do that. But all of a sudden, by association, they're saying anybody that works as a taxi driver or works in a takeaway during the night in Rochdale, that they should be suspected of being uh, sexual groomers. And the point is that if this hysteria, if it was created towards any other community, yeah, it would be seen as being discriminatory. But it seems that even in the media and amongst the politicians, there's an accepted norm that to attack and associate the Muslim community with things such as sexual grooming and other things is okay and acceptable. And what that leads to is like what the brother sat here, uh, brother Shawkat sat here, and he's been beaten up in his taxi. This leads to that is that when you create this hysteria in the community, then people who are concerned, who are non-Muslim from the from the non-Muslim community, they will take these things out on the average taxi driver. And if you speak to any of the taxi drivers, this is happening week in week out. This is not something that is just happening in isolated events. We've gone back 
you know, in terms of relations, we've gone back 20 years, now the Muslim the scene, you can sense it, the Muslims are under suspicion. So even today, one of the, the you know, Khalid was showing me, uh, Kamran was showing me, you know, a, a picture where a Muslim taxi had had the word, the P word was all the way across it. And nobody can say that these things are happening out of context. They're happening in the context of the hysteria. Well, why they are highlighting these kind of issues to the media? If they're happening to them, uh, the taxi drivers, they should highlight to them and they should uh, tell them those uh, of the national they work for them. And they ask them, this is the happening to them. They have to work with the police and go to I, I think together. I just take a question from uh, the person behind you. No, I just want to make a comment because I'm glad the taxi drivers have come out and said this because a lot of the other sections of the Muslim community have been suffering in silence because they're hoping that this will blow away. But I'm glad the taxi associations have come forward. It's not going to blow away. And it's not just the taxi drivers. Every Muslim in every profession is being now targeted and being demonized. And I think it's high time that people like yourself should stand up and say, we're not taking any more of this. You've got Muslims being, or charity workers being labeled as terrorists. You've got taxi drivers being labeled as groomers. Um, as if the wider society is not affected by the same problems. You've got people going to Iraq and Afghanistan, getting radicalized and coming back and committing terrorism in this country. They're not Muslim kids. They're former soldiers of the British Army. Every single attack that has happened here of a radicalized person is not a Muslim who's gone to <coughs> Afghanistan or Iraq. It's a British soldier like Ryan McGee from uh, Salford who recently got done for having bombs and weapons in his house. He wasn't done for terrorism. He was done for having weapons. But when a Muslim writes a poem or anything condoning anything the British policy is, isn't in agreement with, they slap the terrorism law on their heads and they arrest them. They bang them up for a number of months before they're releasing them without evidence. So I'm glad the taxi drivers have stood up because it's not just the taxi drivers, all Muslims in, in teaching professions, in business, in all sorts have got a spotlight on them. If they commit a crime, it's because you're a Muslim. But if you are not a Muslim and you rape a woman, it's got nothing to do with your religion. If you commit acts of terrorism, it's got nothing to do with your secular beliefs. And if you commit crime or vandalism, it's got nothing to do with your secular or religious or any other kind of values you have. But if a Muslim as so much as breaks wind, it's because of his religion. And to be honest, I'm glad you guys have stood up. We shouldn't take this anymore. We need to speak up and say we're not taking this Islamophobia. Because Islamophobia is just a term to legalize uh, uh, hatred against Muslims. And it's a term to sort of legitimize and condone aggression against Muslims. And to be honest, we don't, we don't accept this Islamist label anymore. And we don't accept this Islamophobia label. My name is uh, Rifat Mahmoud. I'm a local businessman. So what I'm asking is why did Jack Straw choose Rasdil and Radram? These were the dead town. All these investigations, he's the mastermind behind all these. Ask the extra time and why did they choose the Rush there? I, I think, to, to yeah. be honest, the Jack yeah. Straw didn't choose Rush there. Jack Straw chose the Muslims. That's what he did. Rush there and Rotherham, or whether it could be any other town in the country. No, they did. They no, no, no. Did what, what I meant was he yeah. chose what he wanted to portray, Jack Straw wanted to portray, and these are like irresponsible comments, and this is what we could bring into context. Yeah. That irresponsible comments by people like Jack Straw that say Muslims see white girls as easy meat, as they put it. Or any other politician that says similar things, maybe not such blatant language, but even more subtly, yeah. leads to what we call, what, we, what we've said in the press statement, is that the low-level xenophobia that exists, it leads, it does become normalized. You just imagine if a non-Muslim person continuously hears that Muslim people, whether it be Rochdale or Rotherham, and why they, why they chose these towns, I don't know yet, but whether it be Rochdale, Rotherham, Derby, Oxford, anywhere, or any other town, when they continue to hear this, the walk comes home, it, for, it affects the Muslim community. It affects my wife when she walks to the shops and you get teenagers spitting at her because she's dressed in the Islamic dress. You get teenagers saying, look, look how she's dressed. That's the kind of racism and the xenophobia that comes to us. And the politicians and the media have to understand it's not about writing something or saying a statement and it has no effect upon them. It has an effect on people like Shawkat who's got beaten up just trying to earn a living yeah, for his family. Because all he wants to do is put food on the table and that's it. And he's got beaten up in his taxi and in the living. And we got pictures of him, of the injury, that was a part of his body that he wasn't injured in. Yeah, now we, we, the media and the politicians need to understand 
You can't make a statement and expect nothing to happen. And the, the point that was made before, I think that's because we all, as Muslims, even the wider society, have said that Islamophobia should, isn't a part, isn't the way civilized societies operate. Now, the one guy here, the Tajwed Akbar, he snubbed that world. Uh, yeah, that because he's, that's, he does, he's a taxi driver as well. Because he's stuck in the face. The thing is, we could, we could be dozens, dozens of examples, and over the last few weeks, whilst we've been organizing this, the, the number of examples that have come to mind, I didn't know about this before we started organizing these things. And it's horrendous that a certain uh, you know, part of the community lives under this kind of discrimination and pressure. All the time that you all you can do is go out to earn a living and you don't know whether you're going to come home in one piece or not. If, the, if that was any other segment of society, do you think there would be this kind of blind eye turned towards it? I don't think it would be. But because it's Muslims and you taxi drivers, they think it doesn't matter if a few Pakistani taxi drivers, Muslim taxi drivers get beaten up, so what? And they're all sexual groomers anyway. Yeah, and this is the point. What kind of society is it when we, when we accept these things as norms and we don't, the, the politicians speak out against you, they never speak out for you. Yeah, and if they have to accept they're responsible for these things. And the other thing I would like to... Media is responsible, they should defend as well. Yeah. They put our point of view as well. There's one more thing, yeah. one small point I'd like to make is that obviously uh, in Rochdale, because of our majority here in the first place, I mean, we are the people who actually cast the, 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 the winning vote. And if we make a person, uh, an MP, a member of parliament for this constituency, <coughs> it's through our votes. And if that person cannot uh, represent us in, on, on a fair an equal um, pegging, then that person is not worthy of representing our society and we should, in the next polls, would make that apparent. Can I take a question from yeah, so Can I just clarify that? Are you saying that Simon Lamechuk is not representative of the community today? No, 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 what I'm saying is that politicians, when they make irresponsible statements, they should take responsibility for what happens to people like him. Absolutely. The other thing what we need, need, to, need to point out is that the uh, problem is Simon is not working for other people, he's working and for And the point is, the main no, problem no, no, I mean, is... Yeah. No, this is, this is well, just one thing, uh, I'll finish off very quickly. Uh, the main thing is, the reason is that him representing us, if he was representing us, he would be sitting with us, yeah. he would ask us what's the problem. What is, why, why... Uh, is it that we supposedly we're supposed to be out there grooming girls or whatever but he does not understand the wider wider implications of what he's saying and the main thing is that we've had for the last 30 to 40 years we've had uh, a lot of sort of young girls becoming mothers we've had teenage pregnancy problem we've had we've got a lot of poverty in this town where people uh, are finding it difficult to Go, go about the business, pay the bills, pay the rent, uh, and obviously they feel a resentment, and all they need is an excuse, and obviously the, the, the media provides the, the fuel. Did you speak to your local councillors about these kind of issues? You know, basically, we invite the local councillors, but the, 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 point, the, 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 the point that should be clear is I don't want to politicise this issue. It's not about Labour Party, Liberal Party, Conservative Party, or any party. It's not about a councillor or a politician. This issue is about Muslims, the ordinary people, when you're walking on the street and you're getting looked at like you're some type of criminal or a terrorist, that's got, that color the, isn't colored by the Labour Party or the Conservative Party. What all these people do the big statement. So we, want to, we don't want to criticize the issue that I should vote for this person and this person on these issues. The point is the Muslim community needs to make a stand that enough is enough. Yeah, and we've come to a point where enough is enough. And why does that be taxi drivers? So I don't want the reports to go out that you know we are uh, you know we are defending one party or the other. Well, that's not what we're doing here. You know about that. Everyone was invited. They're welcome to come. The doors are still open, and they're welcome to come. We never stop anybody here. It's an openly, publicly available press conference. So, so the issue is that the Muslim community must make a stand, and the non-Muslim community should understand that Muslims are not all sexual groomers or all terrorists. I see there's a question at the back. Every single time I step outside my door, I have threats. I've had somebody mark the pavement as if it were going to be over. Um, comments on a terrorist. I've got a bomb underneath my clothes. It's absolutely continuous. And it started last year when we had like, the whole niqab ban sort of thing in the media. It was so 
strong because it started from them. People seem to think that it actually is value. And because they feel it's value, they sort of think they've got a right to come and ask me, why am I in this, why am I living in this country? Why don't I come back to where I come from? You can tell by my accent I was born here. And it, it is continuous. So now I tend to either not go out or stick to my own area. I mean, it is mixed, but it doesn't tend to happen. Because if I go anywhere in town, any other area, it's just constant, constant reviews. And I do think men are becoming, it's always men as well by the way, it's only ever white men, it's never women and I just think that they're getting braver, they're becoming more confident, they come closer to me, they become quite aggressive when I'm with my husband or my teenage sons, they don't come anywhere near me, it's only when I'm on my own. So that affects my daily life, so I just wanted to say that from your wife's point of view, it's exactly the same for me. So how long controversial about the Muslim community, they will not put their heads above the parapet. Jack Straw has been voted in year after year after year by the Muslim community in, 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 in Blackburn, yet he's the one who's instigated that sister over there getting, getting a, a, a aggression in the street. And these politicians don't represent us. Even if it's a Muslim council or a Muslim MP, they represent their party. So I think the most effective way for us to get our voice heard is by doing things like this, bringing politics and control back to ourselves, organising community meetings, organizing ourselves and raising our concerns and liaising at the community level with other communities, you know, go and meet the Christians, go and meet the other organizations and talk to them. And I think you've done that. You've gone to the church with your with your taxi association and, and, and hammered out a deal. This is the way we need to work. We need to the communities need to work with one another. I think the politicians, wider society have given up with them. And I think we as Muslims should also give up with them and bring the politics back home into our own communities and deal with our issues, voice our concerns and put plans ourselves and deal with them. Because you can forget the local politicians, they're just in it for careers. invite everybody when it's in the proper in the newspapers, even the English people, Christians, Muslims, Jews, whoever, whoever wants to come can, is welcome. And that's what we want to do. We want this community to be one. Not just Asians on one side and uh, English on the other. One community looking after each other and obviously not no aggression from either point. I mean we don't want to be like saying well we'll go and because our tax drivers will be so we'll go and meet some of the English people. That's a negative way to go about it. And we need, like I said, uh, a greater understanding and a bit more cohesion between our society. Are there any more questions? Sorry, uh, can I just ask what your action plan involves? What kind of things you want to do? Um, in terms of the, the basic action plan that we got organised, that we are going to organise, is that to give information and booklets to the taxi drivers that they can give to their non-Muslim customers or if they ask questions about Islam and the, the, the grooming and these things to basically remove the myth that Islam and grooming is um, linked. The other thing that we want to do, that well, what we think should do, that the mosques, which they do have opened it, but we think the mosques locally should be more open towards the non-Muslim community so they can come and discuss Islam. And also we want to, uh, in the future, uh, you know, organize workshops for the local community who can come and learn about how to, do, how to show even their own next door neighbors, uh, you know, discuss Islam with them. And, and that even all non-Muslims should feel comfortable discussing Islam, asking the questions they've got about Islam to Muslims. <coughs> rather than like, you know, the, the lady was saying, rather than staring at her and, you know, getting aggressive, we should, they should be able to ask those questions. And the Muslim community, we've got no problem answering any questions. Yeah, we've got no problem having an uh, open di discussion and debate about Islamic values and Islam. But the problem here is when, you, when all we ever get is a finger pointed at us, and no response is given, and if a response is given, and then it's misconstrued in the media, or by the politicians, then the way I can describe it is that it's like being in a narrow, a narrow dark corridor. All these comments are suffocating the life out of the community. Yeah, their voice is not being heard. They've been accused of this, that, and the other, and in that context, 
then you know the, the community feels downtrodden and discriminated against, and that's not, what, not where we want to be. We want to engage with the wider community. Okay. Um, if if there's no more questions, okay. last final question. So, imagine from the uh, Asian Express newspaper. Um, one of the lines of discussion that national media takes on this really issues is that internally, in our communities, things are not, are not being done. The onus is not taken. So. Mosques, they need to talk about these issues. Now, do you buy into this argument that you know it's like an internal issue, and therefore there needs to be an internal debate about grooming and these issues? Uh, look, I think um, um, there definitely needs to be an in engagement uh, in order to address some of the some of these pressing issues which have been raised today. Um, however, obviously, it's a uh, part of our responsibility in order to create this engagement. Uh, we need to be proactive in. Uh, arranging uh, dialogue and discussion where we can address these. We need to open our mosques up so we can have open days and um, so we can educate the wider society about uh, about Islam. Um, and uh, more importantly, we need to you know look at how people uh, can, for example, deal with some of these day-to-day -day challenges uh, that people are facing and how to respond to to, to the discrimination that they are in, uh, that they are witnessing. Um, and um, uh, the, the, the internal debate is is a section of it. However. The, the, the main issue is this, is that the very reason we are here is because this issue has been, uh, of grooming and other, other issues, have been ethnicized and they have been um, profiled as though they are, they, they're all, that they are only Muslim issues. Uh, and, and the biggest kind of, uh, um, you know, the people who have created this climate are the politicians, are, it's, it's the media, uh, and it's, it's very obvious. We don't need to look at who, which politician, you can just Google it. And you will see, uh, you know, a number of Google pages where where, they have, where there's uh, Islamophobic attitudes, and this has reached an extent where it, where it has now become, uh, you know, uh, an acceptable norm. It's become a black, black religion of prejudice. It's become a norm. It's affecting ordinary people like this gentleman at the end. It's affecting this sister who, who's sitting here today. Um, and uh, the, this is the main issue. Uh, this needs to stop. And of course, we we also need to have a. a wider engagement with the wider society um, as well. I would like to add a point as well that media needs to play a better role. The thing is, the media is not reporting it properly if anything happens. I can give you an example like that. If anything happens in Manchester, the, they're going to put in the record that, okay, English gang did this or black gang did this. When it comes to the Asians, instead of putting Asian gang, they're putting Muslim gangs. Why there is a double standard for that? Why they, instead of putting Asian gangs, why they are mentioning it's a Muslims gang? Um, if there are any more questions, if not, then we will conclude the first one. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.